Gabby, watching Martinelli tonight, what do you think that that does for the future of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang? Because he's really grasped that opportunity uh, with I both think, hands, hasn't he? I think like the results since he's been um, put aside, you know, they've been so promising. You know, Martinelli's been um, in the side. He's been outstanding today. Like, the way he took his goals, outstanding, confidence. That's what you want to see from a young player. So for me, that's going to definitely push Aubameyang out the door even more. Do you think he, he can find a way back? I don't think so, no. And I, at first, last week when we spoke, we didn't know the full story. And, you know, yeah, one game for me was the, like, the right punishment for him. Miss a game, you know, you come back at the wrong time when the manager said you had one day to get um, over, get your mum back. So you understand that, Pony, show that you're, the, you're a tough manager, no one's going to break the rules. But how he's continued now for me has been shocking. Like, the treatment of Aubameyang, like... All these, all the things he's done for Arsenal, all the goals he scored, do you know? Like, and you, and you, you isolating him on his own to train with his own. It happened to me at Villa. Di Matteo, the day before the season started, wanting me to leave. I said no chance, I'm leaving. And he put me in the under twenty threes, isolated me from the first team. How does that make you feel? What, what? Disgusting. Your mental health is at an all time low. I was the, that was probably the first time I've been depressed. I was depressed for two months until the manager got the sack. Because, because you're going into the first team dressing room still and it feels like the players don't want to talk to you. The players that you're mates, that you've been close with, I like, I like treating you like, oh, oh don't want to speak to him. The man, if the manager catches us speaking to him, maybe we might be with him. So you get you get treated like a bad egg. Like, Do you feel like the players then have to pick sides and, yeah. and sh- prove their loyalty yes. to the manager? Exactly. And, and that and, isolates and, and, yeah, you. Yeah, players will choose the manager and choose like, yeah, they're going to get um, to still play the games and stuff. So I understand that. But... Let's let's not forget Aubameyang's mental health. His mom's not very well. He's went to get his mom. I bet if you asked him today, would he do the same again? He'd say exactly the same again. Family comes first before anything. I'll do exactly what he done. And let's not forget about Aubameyang's mental health. He's probably now trained on his own. Probably never never had to do that in his career. But we don't know what the situation was like behind the scenes and what the communication was like. Yeah, Perhaps, of you know, if there was an issue getting back on time, maybe yeah. if the communication was right, it wouldn't have been such no, an course. issue. But still, it's it's not a way to treat a human being. Like, it's, like, like Do you think it's not? It's because it's not the first time? Yeah, there's but been an even, even if it was the tenth time and he's done something, like, still, you don't isolate players and throw them on their own to train. Like... We talk about mental health, everyone, but when it suits us, what about Aubameyang's mental health? Who's checking up on him? All you see is that, oh, great, Arteta, solid manager. What about the player? Because I went through it. My mental health was all-time low when I was isolated away, isolated away from the team. Do you know what I mean? It's not as if Aubameyang's been caught having um, COVID parties in his in his house when he should be at home. You know what I mean? He's not, he's not been caught partying in a nightclub when he should be at home. Like, come on, he's gone to get his mum. Where's the, like... What do you think that it will be like for the other players as well? Because they'll, you know, you'll have obviously good friends in the, the, in the dressing room. He's, a popular he's player. the former captain. He's a popular player. You see when you, you see his Instagram over the, the, the last year, Saka, they get on well with him. They're always laughing and joking. Pepe, Lacazette, Martinelli, um, Smith Rowe. They all love, the whole team loves Abami. I'm going to be seeing how he's been treated for me for a minor incident. This is not a major incident. I got suspended. But it's a repeat incident, yeah. and you can understand Arteta having of to course, say, it. but it's enough overkill. Is enough. It's overkill. What you think? One game, absolutely fine, and then yeah, bring but him mate, back into the fold. Then two games is overkill. Then three games. Then isolated from training. Like, like what? You're punishing him like he's Does like, that tell us then that he's like going to be out the door? Does spot? It's as, it's as if he's parked in Arteta's <laughs> spot. Is that the number one crime? You know, like, like, do you know what I mean? It's like he's done something like like ridiculous. Honestly, I don't. Honestly, I just do not get it. And I think it's a joke. And I don't know if, you, if Arteta's doing it for the Amazon cameras. You know, the documentary's going to be coming out. It's going to be like the best thing ever to come out on, um, you know, on TV. Is he doing it because of that? He wants to look like a hard manager for the for the documentary. I can't imagine that's his priority. It doesn't surprise me though, because this is overkill. Like, is he captain? But, but does on. that not tell us he's going to be out the door in January? We're gone. not going to see him play for oh, Arsenal that, again. Thousand is gone, but You'll... what is what it's going to do? It's going to cost Arsenal because if I'm a Bamiyang, I'm taking every single penny, every last penny out of that club. I'm not doing them any favors. Treat you like that. So they could have a similar Ozil situation where a Bamiyang saying, "Yeah, I'll go." I'll go Barcelona, I'll go here, but I'm not taking a penny Yeah, but less. surely he also has to be concerned at how other clubs are going to look at him now because they're going to be concerned about the disciplinary issues. 
Yeah, but he, he, they probably will do. But they'll look at him like he's not a party boy. You know, he he he, yeah, he turned up late probably because he probably couldn't choose what cars to drive. Yes, the, these are the little things that he shouldn't be doing. Yes, he's come back home late. But I think other managers would be like, you know what? Don't do that. There's the week's fine. You know what I mean? I'm not going to throw him under the bus. It's like Arteta's wanting to make a point by throwing um, a Bamiyang under the bus. Other managers that I played under, they'd be like, you know what? I have to show that I'm the boss here. Here's a week's wages. Don't do that again. Next time you do it, you're not. You're going to miss a game. I'm not going to train on your own. Like, like, like he's had a, 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 a party with like 100 people during COVID. Like, I just don't understand the punishment. It's overkill. But can you have any admiration for the way Arteta's trying to reset the culture at Arsenal? Because, you know, it has been a criticism. Yes. There's not enough discipline no, there. There's... A thousand percent, but there's resetting the culture, but then there's, you know, punishing someone severely that's not needed. Aubameyang, miss a game, find him, that's it. Then you're back into the squad and we're going to use you. You know what I mean? He might be on the bench. He might have come on today for Martinelli for 10 minutes, but you still use him. You're paying him. Three hundred fifty thousand pound a week. Still use him, not banish him. Like, fucking like banished him to the like the night's watch. Like, like, come on. It's, it's, honestly, it's, it's ridiculous. I just, I just, I honestly don't get it. And if I'm a Bamiyang, I'm like, okay, then who's my mates in the, in the club? Who's gonna look at look at me? Who's gonna see out what my mental health's like? How's a Bamiyang feeling? Is a Bamiyang well, what, do you, what do you think he was feeling while he's sitting north of the wall watching that Martinelli performance today? Yeah, he's probably thinking like, you know what. Martin Nelly's coming for me. He's doing very well. He'll be happy for the team. Of course he will. But still, he'll, he'll, he'll love Arsenal. He'll want to be out there playing. I'm going to be training on his own. I, honestly, I was the lowest everybody in my life when I was banished because you're like, you're going to train every day and you're like, what am I going to do today? I remember speaking to Danny Rose. It happened to him at Spurs. Like, it's it's brutal and there's not enough, you know, um, done for players that are going through that. Who's seeing how Aubameyang feels now? Who's checking up on Aubameyang every day? How are you? Well, no one. They'd be like, oh, Arteta, yeah, strong manager, well done. Not at all, because that could backfire on Arteta in the future. 